I speak to you in the name of one true and living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Before beginning our sermon, I just have to tell you what a joy. What a joy it is to baptize you, my dear. A child of God, brought into a family of God here at St. Paul's. It's going to be a wonderful time for you as you grow up, and my hope is that somewhere, somehow you remember this special day. I wanted to do something I haven't done since 9-11. Those of you that are old enough, if I tell you I knew where I was on 9-11, I bet you could tell me you knew where you were on 9-11. For those a little bit younger, this year is a year you will remember. And what a tragic past year we've had. Iranian boats going after oil tankers. Bombs flying, covert operations. In the last couple of weeks, we take out an Iranian general. The Iranians fire at two military bases. And in the process, over 180 innocent lives are lost as the Iranians fired on their own people. What a year. During vacation, as Lisa and I were off, I received a phone call, somebody in deep spiritual angst over what should they do. And I said, why don't we do something that I haven't done in many years? Let's open the book of common prayer and let us pray together. So rather than giving us a sermon, we're going to do something we rarely see in a sermon. I'm going to join you by sitting with you and we are going to read prayers some of these prayers in the Book of Common Prayer are going to challenge you. It doesn't matter what political party you're in. After 9-11, Congress and the presidency were united. We're divided. Now, as we look across the broad spectrum of the world, what prayers can we say? I think part of us wants to look at the God of the Old Testament and say, bring down thunder. But then there's the God of the New Testament and His Son Jesus who said, bring down peace. So here, between these covers, you'll find prayers for our armed services, our nation, ourselves, and our enemies. That's the toughest thing to do. Many years ago, after 9-11, I was with Three Star General. He came to me and he said, would you pray for me? I'm praying for peace, but I'm ready for war. He said, I've got to do what I must do to defend this country. He was torn. As a Christian, he knew he had to pray for peace. As a general, he had to prepare for war. And so together, beloved, as Jesus said among his disciples, so I do as my master has done, I shall have a seat with you and ask that you join me in prayers. Let us begin on page 154 of your Book of Common Prayer. Let us read the prayer of supplication together. The day when you leave and you go among your friends and you hear about the sterling sermons preached across Waco, tell them the rector of St. Paul's just wanted to pray. Just wanted to pray. Page 154. O Lord, arise and help us. O God, we've heard with our ears and our fathers have delivered unto us the noble works that thou didst in their days and in the old times before them. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, as now and ever shall be, world without end. From our enemies defend us, O Christ. With pity behold the sorrows of our hearts. Favorably with mercy hear our prayers both now and ever vouchsafe to hear us, O Christ. We humbly beseech thee, O Father, mercifully to look upon our infirmities. For the glory of thy name, turn from us all those evils that we most justly have deserved. Grant that in all our troubles we may put our whole trust and confidence in thy mercy, evermore serve thee in holiness and pureness of living to the honor and glory 
through thy Son, our only mediator and advocate. Turn with me to page 820. 820. Page 820. At the bottom, we're going to pray for the United States, our governor, our Congress, and all in civil authority. Let us say together, O Lord, our governor, whose glory is in all the world, we commend to this nation to thy merciful care, that being guided by thy providence, we may dwell secure in thy place. Grant to the President of the United States, the governor of this state, and to all in authority, wisdom to know and to do thy will. Fill them with the love of truth and righteousness, and make them ever mindful of their calling to serve this people in thy fear. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. And now we will pray for our armed forces, those brave women and men that serve here and abroad to defend our country. Their hearts may pray for peace, yet their bodies and minds are ready to defend us. Let us turn, please, to page 823. For those of you that have served in the military, if you wish to stand in memory of those that have been lost to us, feel free. The rest of us will read together for those in the armed forces of our country. Almighty God, we commend to your gracious care and keeping all the men and women of our armed forces at home and abroad. Defend them day by day with your heavenly grace. Strengthen them in their trials and temptations. Give them courage to face the perils which beset them and grant them a sense of your abiding presence wherever they may be, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Probably the hardest prayer of all we will say this morning is found on page 816. Yet it is something Jesus himself commended us to do. As he said, pray for those not yourself. Pray for your enemies. On page 816. O God, the Father of all, whose Son commanded us to love our enemies, lead them and us from prejudice to truth. Deliver them and us from hatred, cruelty, and revenge. And in your good time, enable all of us to stand reconciled before you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The last prayer we will say is found on page 833, 800. 33, it is a prayer from St. Francis, 833, Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console. To be understood as to understand. To be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. It is dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. If you forget where these prayers are located, simply go to our website or log on to our app, and you can hear the prayers that we have said together as a family. It's like I told the parishioner that called me, what do we do, Father? What do we do? I said, open your book of common prayer. The mothers and fathers of this church have written these prayers so that we may mark, learn, and inwardly digest them for our comfort and our hope, and our joy. For a moment, in silence, pray for our country and all the lives that have been lost. It's not been a sermon, but prayers of the hopeful from St. Paul's to the world. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.